I'm so sorry. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we'll be taking a look at the Red Death Virus, also known as ZN1, as featured in Z Nation and the recently released Black Summer television series. So, for those of you who don't know, Black Summer is a prequel series to Z Nation that recently dropped on Netflix that follows a handful of survivors that attempt to make their way to a safe site some 10 miles away. While Z Nation picked up a few years after the zombie epidemic had ravaged most of the world, Black Summer takes place roughly six weeks after the initial release of the Red Death Virus. What I love about this series is that, unlike other shows like Z Nation and The Walking Dead, where everyone seems to know that the way to take out a zombie was by going for the head, the victims featured in Black Summer have no idea how to effectively bring down the undead, giving way to some heart-stomping action scenes that can only be described as chaotic. Now, ZN1 was essentially the designation given by the Center for Disease Control for the virus that was responsible for the global zombie apocalypse before the American government and the nation as a whole was plunged into self-destructive anarchy. In the Z Nation television series, which was unfortunately cancelled by the Sci-Fi Channel after its fifth season, despite the fact that it was performing better than the other shows renewed by the channel, it's explained that a Walter Curian was responsible for the creation of the virus. Now, Curian was a disgraced former director of the Division of Infectious Disease at the University of California that ended up being wanted by Interpol for manufacturing and selling bioweapon technology to numerous countries around the world, with little care or thought about the major ramifications of his actions. The Sinister Doctor had in essence created the virus by gathering numerous samples from crocodile addicts in New York, patients found in Ebola camps in Africa, a man he'd infected with radiation in an abandoned bioweapons facility in Kazakhstan, as well as samples from a Haitian man who was found alive after being buried underground for 21 days and who'd remained in a trance with no semblance of will. Can you sit up please? He responds to commands, but seems to be completely unaware of his surroundings. You can lower your arm. Turn toward me. Lie back down. The menacing doctor then used a blend of these core samples to synthesize ZN1 for a secret project codenamed Red Death with the aim of selling the bioweapon to the highest bidder. While the virus remained secure in Colorado at a secret lab within Fort Collins, it was eventually transferred to humans via a lab technician named Brandon Doyle, who was patient zero. Doyle was then quarantined and given an experimental vaccine which stopped him from turning into a zombie, but this also prevented him from dying, causing his body to decompose until all that would be left of him was bone. Red Death then spread like wildfire within the facility, before eventually taking over the 160,000 plus inhabitants of Fort Collins and the greater Colorado area within days, turning the entire region into a black zone, which was the military designation for cities and areas that had no humans and were inhabited by only zombies. Though the virus was originally bloodborne, requiring direct contact between it and the cells of a victim caused by bites and scratches, like most world-ending virus outbreaks, the pathogen eventually mutated to an airborne strain, making containment impossible. Because of this, I actually think that it's likely that everyone in the world had essentially become infected with a dormant strain within weeks, and the virus was merely waiting for the body to die before it could activate itself and take over the host, much like the wildfire virus featured in The Walking Dead, which I've also covered on this channel and will be leaving a link to below. What the bites and scratches of the infected do to a healthy person is begin the process of irreversible contamination as their blood and saliva, which contain an active strain of the virus, begin inducing a cytokine cascade, which is a potentially fatal immune reaction consisting of a positive feedback loop between cytokines and white blood cells, which is further exacerbated by the bacteria that resided in the mouths of zombies. Once a host was infected by ZN1, they would begin to exhibit a number of symptoms, including, but not limited to, flu-like fevers, cellular necrosis resembling gangrene that would also cause severe discoloration of the skin, and soon after the transformation, they would begin to experience an enhanced sense of hearing, a reduction in motor and cognitive functions, as well as violent tendencies towards non-infected individuals. 
The infected would also have their red blood cells increase their oxygen storage capacity, resulting in slower blood flow and increased muscle endurance and strength. However, it should be noted that due to the cellular necrosis, over time, the muscles would deteriorate and waste away to nothing. Due to the damage done to the nervous system, the undead were limited to simple activities like standing, balancing on two legs, walking, biting, pushing and pulling, similar to small children who have no concept or awareness of their surroundings. With the exception of Alvin Murphy, who had been given a vaccine in the first episode of Z Nation, which I'll be discussing later. Because of the transformation caused by Red Death, the infected essentially become near mindless undead beings that did not require shelter, food, rest or water to survive, though they still maintained an unbounded hunger for flesh. Unlike The Walking Dead, where the wildfire virus took some time before taking over its host, the transformation caused by ZN1 was near immediate, making it impossible to help anyone that was bitten, even if the bite site was amputated within seconds. Red Death also created a number of infected variants seen throughout the Z Nation series, including zombie animals, the incredibly fast blasters, phytos, which were a hybrid plant zombie type, radioactive zombies, frankenzies, which were essentially mutated zombies with numerous limbs, and of course the hard to kill mad Zs that had incredible resilience due to their aggressive mutation and who needed to be completely destroyed in order to be stopped. The most unique zombie hybrid, however, would have to be Alvin Murphy, a former prison inmate featured in Z Nation that had been forcibly given an experimental vaccine much like Doyle before him. Directly after being given the vaccine, Murphy, who at that time had been strapped to a gurney, was then attacked by a number of zombies that bit him eight times, but the man miraculously survived due to the strain of the vaccine he'd been given. As a result of the vaccine and its harmonious integration into his cells, Murphy became more than both human and zombie. With his newfound super strength, the ability to control other zombies, as well as the power to infect others with his antibodies, which in turn made them a slave to his will. Interestingly, as the series progressed, Murphy began to dissociate himself from the human survivors around him, and he began to sympathize more and more with the zombies that he also shared a bit of kinship with. I think this has a lot to do with the circumstances and how he'd become infected, and the insistence of everyone around him that he had to be experimented on once again as a means of finding a cure. Murphy essentially becomes a sort of god amongst humans and zombies, featuring the best of both worlds, not only having the intelligence of humans, but also maintaining the resilience and strength of zombies. That hurt. What I really appreciate about both Z Nation and Black Summer is that they try to do something different with the zombie genre that has proliferated popular culture. Not only following the backstory and journey of survivors as most films and TV shows often do, but also exploring the unique dichotomy between humans and zombies. Getting us to question which of the two are actually more barbaric by dissecting the actions of the zombies that mindlessly pursued the human survivors, and the remaining humans that would do anything to survive, including taking advantage of other survivors and often killing them to get ahead. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the Red Death Virus, featured in both Z Nation and Black Summer. If you haven't seen either shows, they're both on Netflix at the moment, and I highly recommend you guys check them out. And since Black Summer is a prequel series, you may as well watch that one first so you can see the events play out in chronological order. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content, and if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Ah!